What's up guys, welcome back. Today we're talking about uh, PO460 series of codes, uh, which all have to do with the fuel level input uh, to the cluster initially to calculate and then over to the PCM. Now the most common code associated with a fuel level gauge that is erratic or is not responding is a PO460 code. And the reason being is the, the, the PCM has a lot of self-checks going on inside of there. And a 460 code um, is basically a monitor that the fuel, uh, well, the PCM monitors the fuel level. And then let's say you drive 50 miles. If that fuel level doesn't drop for the calibrated amount, it's going to set a light after a couple times of seeing that fall. And that's what a 460 code is. And that's the most common code you're gonna see associated with a uh, failed fuel level sending unit, which is actually right here. It's the float arm and the float itself on the fuel pump uh, inside the fuel tank. Okay, so um, today we're gonna go over the anatomy of this and how to test it, you know. Um, but also, I wanna talk to you about this right here because this isn't talked about enough in my opinion. Uh, we went through this problem a lot back when I first started the dealer. And the whole reason these fuel sending units are failing or getting coated is because of the high sulfur content in the fuel. Now the only thing out there that's designed to actually clean off that sulfur from that sending unit card and then protect it is the Chevron Tecron Plus. You can, it has to be the, the plus version, okay? And that has the protectant and the cleaner for that fuel sending card on there. So you can bring it back to like new status just by dumping this in the tank, okay? So this is the only product out there that I know of, that the manufacturers know of, as far as the automotive manufacturers, that actually uh, is designed to clean these cards off and protect them. So if you have this issue, with uh, erratic fuel gauges, you're getting PO460 series type codes in the PCM or even the cluster. Um, you want to dump this in there, the plus, uh, for at least two full tankfuls. Okay, so put the amount that you need in for your vehicle's uh, fuel tank capacity size, and then uh, repeat it on the next, the next, the very next fuel tank of fuel, and then reevaluate from there as the codes come back. Um, is the cluster responding properly? Um, so let's go over to the bench and check out this fuel level sending unit and we'll show you exactly how they fail and what to test for on them. All right, so here's a real nice close up of that sending unit card. Here's the float arm going down and out uh, to the float. Now, as you can see here, there's one wire that goes down to the actual uh, sending unit card here, okay, and then the other side right here coming down and over uh, goes to the wipers the actual wiper that makes contact with the different uh, graduations on here okay so what happens is basically from an empty tank which is way down which is about 180 ohms all the way up to and it continually changes i'll show you here in a second where it maxes out hey we're full it's around 10 to 15 ohms okay so what you can do, you're not going to pull this out of the tank to check it. So what you can do is tap into the wiring that's coming out of the fuel pump. It's going to have the fuel pump wires, and it's also going to have these lead straight to uh, these two points on the card on here. Uh, so you can disconnect that on top of the fuel tank, tap into it with a, a regular multimeter ohm gauge, and you can literally grab onto the vehicle stand on it and rock it back and forth and as the fuel sloshes in there this is going to react and you're going to be able to see that now a definitive you know absolute uh, test of this is to take it out and slowly raise it and make sure you're constantly getting that reading on there so let me pull you back here i'll show you exactly what's going on let's get you up nice and high here so you can see the multimeter there you go 
Okay, so I'll hold it up for you guys so you can see it. There we go. Gold. Okay, so right now the the fuel tank is empty, right? So we have 179, 180. We're slowly gonna raise it. We should get a constant reading. There should be no weird dropouts or um, erratic readings. And as it goes up, it should also decrease in resistance consist consistently. You shouldn't all of a sudden have a spot where it's, you know, not reading right. We have high resistance again, just like this. We're dropping, dropping, dropping. Da, 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 da. So each vehicle is different, uh, but most are right around this range. So you can look for this, you know, kind of reading on there where you have a full tank, uh, low ohms, and an empty tank at high ohms, right around there. Okay. Um, so what's happening? is the high levels of sulfur in the fuel, and this is in constant contact with the fuel, it's coating this. Now we need an actual contact between this contact point, the wiper, and that to make that resistance reading and send it back to the uh, instrument cluster to be um, calculated. And then it's sent to the PCM uh, for information reasons, obviously. Um, so yeah, that's what's happening, it's coating it. And what that, that Chevron Techron Plus does is it'll actually scrub it for you. And then it'll put on a layer of protectant on there so that sulfur can't get to it and recoat it uh, immediately again. And there's been whole articles on this. And the fuel sulfur issue has been eradicated uh, to an extent. Um, but it still pops up here and there, especially with time. It'll still get coated because there is any sulfur in the fuel. Um, it's just one of the components of the fuel. Um, so if you're having this kind of concern, you don't always need to go into the tank and pull this fuel uh, module out and replace the sending unit. Um, a lot of times you can dump that stuff in there and it'll actually clean. It's made just for it. Okay. Now, another part, another piece of information is uh, these fuel pump modules like this generally are not serviceable, but the one component that is almost always serviceable is this sending unit card. So that's at least something so it may cost you 60 or 70 dollars for this whole assembly you pop it on there it clips right on most times a little screw a little set screw and that's it um uh, instead of paying you know four or five hundred dollars for the entire module uh, on, on here um so yeah that's what's going on and that is how to test it in reality it's the most simple basic way to test it um, to make sure that this part of it, what's inside the fuel tank, is working for you and send that signal out. All right, that's about it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time.